Uh, welcome to Those, Those Two, Two Chicks. Chicks with a podcast. My name's Jordan. My name's Emma Grace. And you have caught us on a great day. Yes. Because it's True Crime Tuesday. Mm-hmm. It's True Crime Tuesday. I have to tell you something. Oh my God, every time. No, I just thought of it. <laughs> okay. That was the first, I deserve an award. That oh. is the first time you've done an intro. You were on the ball. I know. Like, I'm then listening back through some episodes. I'm like, Emma, why is this so hard yeah, for you? But to be fair, I kind of just like jump into it without yeah. saying, okay, ready? Sometimes I'm like taking a, like a drink of water or yeah, I, I like just sit. I'm not even sitting down yet. No, <laughs> <we're not gone. laughs> I shouldn't be the one leading it off. Because I, I get too excited. I'm like, welcome. I, I need to give you like a nod. I just have to say, mm-hmm. I apologize for how I laughed in the last episode because I was listening back to that and I was like, good God, that hurt my ears. Like, it was so cringy. And some, I don't know, I just laugh fucking weird sometimes, especially if I'm really tired. Oh. Yeah. And I was listening to that and I was like, Ew. I was slap pappy. Me too. Slap and, pappy. And when you came over yeah. here, like it's seven thirty. Oh yeah. And I'm, I'm I was telling I was telling Dan, I'm like, I'm already tired. But I was Good. like, it's not even time to do the podcast <laughs> yet. I don't know if we're like podcasters at night. Very I just don't think that's I think for we're us. like early morning specials. We, we are. We're early morning <laughs> Did you say early morning specials? <laughs> And I don't know what makes sense because we're old. I feel like we're old people. We are. This takes me back to what I said in the beginning. Mm-hmm. I am old. Maybe not numeric, numerically. Numeric. Numerally. No, it's not numerally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, numerically. I don't think I'm old. Internally, I think I'm rotting. When I have like my doctors or like I went to a chiropractor, and they're like, "You have literally the worst knees ever." <laughs> My knees are equivalent to 23. I know. And they said my knees are equivalent to like someone that's like 70, 75. What the fuck? I'm like, oh, great. I feel like that's what they would tell me though. Yeah, it's Especially not my good. Ankles. I need to get my oh, ankles. Oh, yeah. So- I agree you need to get your ankles. <laughs> my mom's like, you need to get special shoes. <laughs> but they're ugly. I know. Special shoes are ugly. I'm not going to get special fucking they shoes. They look like clown shoes. I know, they're hideous. But Lucas said he's not going to push me around in a wheelchair, so I better oh. do it or I guess I'm getting divorced. I don't know. Maybe we could bring them in fashion. <laughs> Probably not, because I'm not even in fashion now, so <laughs> it's not going to work. Can you imagine me wearing some, like, fucking penny lo- uh, not penny loafers. I don't know why I said that. I just old people's shoes. Pennywise? No, penny loafers. Aren't penny loafers a shoe? Pennywise? That's the That's dancing clown. <laughs> I just watched a video about that. I love that movie. Scary movie. Uh, oh, God. Mm-hmm. What did we start talking about in the beginning? I don't know. Guess what I bought today. What did you buy? A smoker. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I'm coming over for dinner. Dan always wanted one. He's Dude, really good at grilling. That's like a man. That's a manly gift. I know. He's He's really good at grilling. Like, that's it's awesome. like, holy crap. Like, they're good. And so he always wanted a smoker, like, for yeah. so long. So he got one today. That's awesome. He looks like a kid on Christmas. Did he really? Yeah, he he's, gets he's so like excited. A guy. <laughs> I am oh. gonna say I've been I've been actually wanting a true crime. Have you? Episode. Yeah, I've been um, I've been eager to take a listen. Well, I was just telling Emma before this started. I want to switch up my true crimes because I have only covered shitty fucking men for the past three weeks. Yeah, that's true. Just think about it. I did the John the Norman Collins. Brothers. Oh, I I've done four. Has that? Been the only thing I've covered? Wait, mm-hmm. who was in between John Norman Collins and the Skelton Brothers? Or was there not? I think there was. Mm-hmm. There had to be one. John Norman Collins. No! It went John Norman Collins, the Skelton Brothers, the Uber Shooter, and then today. Oh. How you have it a feel theme. Like we've been... And what do I have? I have crazy ladies named Mary. Yeah, but that... And Rose. I'm going to tell you. You know what? I'm not even going to give him, like, the title. We're going to give it to his victim. I'm going to tell you guys the story of the murder of Tara Lynn Grant. I'm just going to jump right into it. It sucks. It's a little depressing. Good has come out of it at the end in a way. Obviously, not what we would like it to be, but... Okay, so Tara was born on June 28th, 1972 in rural Michigan. Also a hard word to pronounce, rural. I hate that word, actually. I will avoid it at all costs. I'll be like, uh, secluded area. (laughs) Secluded area of Michigan. That sounds creepy. It does. I don't think it can be rural. Rural. All right, a rural. Rural. God, now I can't do it. Rural. 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 Area of Michigan. (laughs) 
She had a normal childhood and was very bright. Mm. She would go on to earn her bachelor's degree at Michigan State University. Michigan State was also where she would meet her future husband, Stephen Grant. Let me just say, the way he courted her or like was trying to date her, be to me. Creep vibes. So they were just friends. And she told him, you know, I kind of have a boyfriend. And that pissed him off because he was like, do you or don't you? Which is also like none of your business. What? <laughs> what? Like if it is or not for sure. Yeah. You know, she, whatever. So she had kind of a boyfriend back in her hometown. Now this is in the 90s. So I'm sure like it was hard to do long distance. Maybe that's why she said kind of. Anyway, she had um, a death in the family mm-hmm. and she had to go back to her hometown. It, it was Escanaba is the, and he went there like he he okay what was i saying he went there okay so she went to the um funeral she went back to her hometown he followed her and just for reference for our people that aren't like from michigan michigan you can hold out your um right hand and look at it palm up right that's michigan we got a little mitten okay so where they're going to school in like michigan state university Mm -hmm. bottom of the thumb kind of like in the palm like along the bottom of the thumb that's where michigan state is isn't it i thought it was in lansing oh it is isn't it ann arbor that's where they live oh like eventually wait is that where michigan state is no that's where they live when they after they're married oh so my bad they well it's by ann arbor and ann arbor's over here but lansing is kind of like in the middle i'm so sorry anyway (laughs) okay (laughs) you gotta travel all the way up that little patty Mm-hmm. past that on a bridge then put up your other hand <laughs> for your upper peninsula why am i doing this with you i don't know it's your left hand and you kind of rotate it so your thumb's sticking out straight right that's yeah. the upper peninsula yeah he's going all the way up there it doesn't look like a lot but i'm telling you guys it's a lot it's literally like 10 hour drive to get to yeah Escanaba it is from Lance. i mean i don't know for sure it's it's at least eight to ten hour drive yeah at least he went all the way there just as her friend. I'm putting up my little quotation marks with my hands. That's creepy. Thank you. That's a red flag. Thank you. And he got there mm-hmm. and she didn't know he was coming. Her boyfriend is there. Oh, kind of boyfriend. Kind of boyfriend. <laughs> and all he's, he was like, oh, it was super awkward. And he went out to dinner with the family and it was just weird, like weird vibes. So he just left and drove back. <laughs> Because he was, he said he was trying to be a good friend by coming to support her. Well, mm-hmm. then she called him the next day and said she was in love with him. Wait, what? Yes. And I'm like, girl, you know, I, I'm not going to victim shame at all. No. That's not what I'm trying to do. No, but I'm not just at saying, all. Huge red flag when I heard that. I was like, that is weird. That doesn't make me think, oh, this guy is, no. I'm in love with him. No. Well, and I don't know. There could be more to the story, but I was sure. just like, God, that is creepy. For what's on paper, though, that creepy. doesn't look safe like that would be something of yeah that's a little too much thank you that's what i thought so you're welcome (laughs) because i was like like thinking about this in my head i'm like that's fucking creepy and also like just to me like almost an invasion of like privacy and her grief oh yeah dating like yeah they may be friends but it's like unless she invited you to Mm -hmm. go all the way to that it was i think it's her grandma's funeral who was she was close with okay so i just feel like that's weird I'm already getting weird vibes from this guy, but that's that's basically how they started dating, okay. was he was being a weirdo. And I think he just wouldn't stop pestering her, and she finally gave in to it. Now, Tara was super bright and really into her studies. Steven, not so much. Oh. Um, and at, when he was in school, he was working for some type of political party around the area, didn't really amount to anything Mm -hmm. um and at the time they got married the economy was really hard it was hard for them to find jobs and i'm pretty sure he actually dropped out of school i don't think he even got his degree okay but tara did get a job with washington group international which was an american corporation that provided integrated engineering construction and management services fancy to businesses and governments around the world so it was based in idaho um but obviously there was an office um in washington around washington township which is where they were from it's close to ann arbor in detroit area so tara would be traveling all the time all over the world basically she was a boss i wrote that in my notes (laughs) tara was a boss Uh she quickly climbed the corporate ladder and this meant that she would be gone often on business trips typically gone for the whole week like the monday through friday Mm -hmm. and then she'd be home for the weekends now tara and steven had two children a girl and a boy and because of Terry, Tara's busy career, Stephen ended up staying home with the children. Mm. And I mean, she provided 
They yeah. had a beautiful home, brand new cars, no money issues. Like they were, they were good. Yeah. And as you can tell, the husband's not looking too great. So <laughs> right. I'll just tell you a little bit of what he said. Like he said that she just was not a good mother because she was gone all the time. He was basically a better mother than she was. Mm-hmm. All this horrible stuff where it's just, it's not fair. It's like, you know, the woman finally gets a shot at being the breadwinner. She's doing an amazing job. And on all accounts, people said she was a great mother when she was there. And she tried so hard by leaving little notes for her kids when she was gone. Like, she still wanted them to know she loved them. Yeah. It wasn't just like, oh, you know, whatever, kids. You know, like, she cared. She wanted to provide for her family. But Stephen did not like that. So, yeah. Over the years, Stephen would start to resent Tara, and he did wish he could have had a career of his own, and that kind of started the resentment because he couldn't. Tara was gone too much, and he actually started to become jealous over Tara's bond with one of her co-workers. Could not find anywhere if the co-worker and her were having an affair. I think they just seemed close, and he didn't like that. Okay. Um, now, what also didn't help the situation was the fact that Stephen was a slime ball, and <laughs> He decided to make up for the lack of his his wife's attention by having affairs with other women, including oh. the couple's 19-year-old German au pair. How delightful. Whose name I'm not going to be discussing because, I mean, it is public. You can find it. She was an adult. Okay. But to me, this was a classic case of grooming. Yeah. Not only is this a 19-year-old, still a child to me. Yeah, they're a legal adult, but they're 19 years old. Yeah, no, that's different. <laughs> She's in a foreign country as well. Oh. She's German. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you said and that. Okay. And lives with them because that's her job. Tell me he's oh. not taking advantage of that. From the sounds of who he is. Thank yeah. You. I, I think we like, can just kind of fill you know, in the brains. Whatever. Say what you want to about. Obviously, the woman, I mean, she knew that he was married and the kids had a mom. But come on. Just creep. He just gives me the creeps. Okay. So on Valentine's Day of 2007, Stephen Grant reported his wife Tara missing. He claimed he hasn't seen her in five days, and he didn't think anything of it because she was typically gone for days at a time with her job. He claimed the last time he saw his wife was on the 9th of February, and she was on the phone with someone unknown, telling them that she would meet them at the end of the driveway. She then got into a dark-colored vehicle, and he didn't see her again. Hmm. Now, he made... So he was on um, plenty of interviews. He loved the media attention, and he would also, like... (laughs) He was just acting weird. Like, he would ask them weird questions like, do you think I should get a haircut for this or would that look bad? Like, if I went to go get my haircut. Or he was like, should I shop for some new clothes for the interviews and stuff like that? It's just weird. That's weird. Just not typical behavior of Mm. someone whose wife is missing. I have a question for you. Yeah. And maybe you don't know the answer. That's fine. Yeah. So him saying that the wife left multiple days at a time, Mm. was that actually true? Did she do that a lot? or She did for her job. Okay. But... It was more so, like, planned, you know? Oh, he just sure, said she just sure. just got to an unknown vehicle with an unknown person. Oh. When it's usually, like, oh, she's going to the airport to go to her Puerto Rico office. You know, like, it's just right. kind of different. Well, I feel like when you're in that kind of job, too, things are planned. I mean, you might have a spontaneous meeting or yeah. something like but a trip? Well, he was, so he was claiming. I can't imagine. This isn't the case, so I didn't really put it in here, but sure. he was sorry, sorry. when she disappeared. Um, that they had an argument over something oh, and yeah. she said she wanted to leave a day early and that made him really mad. Hmm. And basically he just gave up and just shut the garage door and was like, I'm done. I'm not dealing with her. And she went. So oh. I think it was more like a, oh, we're mad at each other. So I don't really know. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Still weird though. Oh like, yeah. Even if no, that's weird. Even if spouse, do you, they just get into an unknown car and you're like, okay, bye. <laughs> like, you're that mad. Oh, been gone for five days. That's weird. You hmm. know, it's just weird. That doesn't make sense. No matter how mad you're Ooh. at with your spouse. Yeah. If they if she left. Has, she has babies. She wouldn't just. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't She was sense. a good mom. She wouldn't just leave like that. Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah. And he was really weird in these interviews. And he would even say that the police were harassing him because they thought he did it. And the police were like, we're not even harassing you. <laughs> like, it was They're just They're doing weird. their job? Yeah. <laughs> and they stopped him. I don't know what he was doing, if he was speeding or what. But they ended up apprehending him because he had a suspended license oh oh, i'm sorry they didn't apprehend him they just gave him a ticket but he claimed that they pulled him over Mm -hmm. just so they could investigate him more for the murder which police said this was not true 
Okay. Like, they just pulled them over because they had to pull them over. <laughs> you know, like, it, sure. it was just something silly. And the whole time during the investigation, he was extremely uncooperative. But the police, um, uncooperative, and the police didn't get a search until, um, a search warrant until March 2nd. Now, they finally got this warrant because a woman who was just walking through a local park found a small bag shoved into a tree. Really weird. The police found, I mean, took it. And yeah. they, inside they found blood and metal shavings. Mm. Really weird. But Stephen's father owned a machine shop. It was a tool oh. and die shop, so he had a ton of machinery, and this prompted the police to, to finally have enough to get a warrant. So they got a warrant for the house, and they got a warrant for his father's business. And I forgot to mention this. Stephen works at his father's business part-time. Like, no, he, like, has access to it, you know? Right. Okay. So while the police were at the Grant residence, Stephen was present at first, but he asked if he could take the family dog for a walk. <laughs> random timing um (laughs) okay but the police couldn't do anything about it because it's not like he was being detained yet they were just doing a search um so but could you guess what they found you guess no no it's eight o'clock at night do you guess what they found okay well they finally found metal shavings and blood at in the park right oh in the park Mm -hmm. okay i would assume the murder weapon then would be at the house right no did they find the body was the body in the house? Mm-hmm. Jordan. Part of it. What? Clothed torso from the thighs to the neck. She had she still had her bra and her underwear and part of her slacks on. Get out. No. In a plastic container in a bag in the garage. Why is it always the garage? <laughs> well, I wouldn't put it in my just... kitchen. <laughs> In the dining yeah, room. I have it anywhere in there, but like, if I'm thinking of anywhere where I would put it, it would be the garage. Where would you put it? I don't know, basement? Crawl space? I live in the basement right now. Oh, remember? yeah, you do. So that's creepy. In the little storage area. Oh, side note there was this one story where a guy did murder his wife like 20 years prior and he kept the pieces in a cooler. Mm-hmm. And he kept the cooler in his kitchen and people would just sit on it. And years and years. So sorry, a totally random. But just thinking about Ew. where people put bodies, I would rather be in the garage than like someone sitting on it. That's so awful. Sorry. Why? I know. So it was in the part of the part of the body part was in the, the house. Body. Okay. Instantly, they're like, "Here we go, boys." Let's right. Get him. Uh, he was gone already. Um. So he knew. He knew they were gonna find it. He knew they were going to for his arrest. So he takes his dog with him. I don't think. I don't he took the dog because I didn't see anything about the dog. I thought he was going to walk with the dog. He was, but I don't know. Uh, there was nothing about the dog, so I don't know if he took it or not. I don't think he did. I don't know. Walked his imaginary thought, dog. I should have looked that up. I never thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, he was already gone. Um, and this would lead police on a chase that spanned over 225 miles north to Michigan Wilderness State Park. Oh. The only reason they figured out where he was was because he made a phone call to his sister that they tracked to that location. This took a couple of days. Um, in between those days, he got a car from a friend. A friend didn't even realize that he was in any trouble. He was just like, oh, I need to borrow a car. And he's like, sure, buddy. Go on. <laughs> um, and then he also brought pills and alcohol and a razor with him to try to commit suicide. Oh. Just trying to get out of it. Um, yeah. And when the police found him, he was clinging to life. Because not only did he take the pills and the alcohol, but he was also sleeping in 14 degree weather without winter clothing. Like he was just in, he was clinging to life, but luckily they got there in time. Um, So they brought him to a Northern Michigan hospital in Petoskey, Mm -hmm. where we finally learned what we think happened to Tara. Obviously, like he could be saying, this is his confession. We just don't know exactly what happened because the other person is obviously gone. Um, So Stephen said... He and Tara were having a heated argument because Tara was so close to a particular co-worker. And after going back and forth, he claimed that Tara slapped him. He hit her back, knocking her to the floor. And now this quote is from an article from True Crime Daily. It's his conf- It's actually Stephen's confession. So, oh. so he said, she fell. Stephen told the detectives in his confession. I know that she banged her head on the floor. And then she said something like, that's it. I'm going to take the kids. You're going to be fucking homeless. You're a piece of shit. Steven says that at that point he snapped, strangling his wife for approximately four minutes. I put my hands on her neck and choked her. She finally grabbed my hand at one point, but it was too late then. I couldn't stop then. I knew I was going to prison, so I panicked. 
Stephen said, end quote. So that's what he claims happened. Okay. And after he loaded her body into their vehicle, the au pair that he was having, and if people don't know what an au pair is, it's like a nanny from a different country, right? That's, I thought that's what it was. I'm pretty, I just didn't know about the different country part, but I'm, I don't, we don't call them nannies here. I think that's literally from like Europe. You get an au pair. I'm like, oh, just so you guys don't, just so the people who don't know, here's what I think it might be. <laughs> and we don't know either. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the au pair he was having an affair with returned home. Okay. He gave her a sob story about Tara leaving him after an argument. And I will state that the au pair had nothing to do with the murder, but I just thought I would add that once Stephen came home from doing what he's going to do next. He mm-hmm. slept in the same bed as the 19-year-old au pair. Like, literally, just after murdering his wife, he just went to bed with his mistress, if you want to call her a mistress. I don't, I don't think that's the right word, but you know what I mean. Just, I just thought that was, he's so nasty. He's so gross. That's really gross. Just murdered your freaking wife and dismembered her. Mm-hmm. And then you're just going to go to bed with a 19-year-old who you've yeah. ruined. And his kids are still in the his house, His kids too. are just sleeping. In the house. Those poor kids. There's How old were they again? Four and six. Oh. And there's another gross part, too, with the something with the kids. But. Oh. He then took her body to his father's tool and dye shop, where mm-hmm. he dismembered her. He told the police he just kept cutting and cutting. He just mm. kept cutting and cutting and cutting. That's what he Okay. Said. He carried the body parts through the woods on his children's sled. Carried their dead mother who he just killed and chopped up i just uh god like i just can't with this guy in this story it's like the ugh, just grosses me out to no fucking he dumped the body parts in a nearby park but he did end up retrieving them after hearing that the cops were going to be searching the park which is how they ended up back at the house he you know he heard they were going to search it so he grabbed as much as he could he must have that one little bag that he stuffed in a tree after being released from the hospital stephen was transported back to Montcalm county where he was charged with premeditated murder and two counts of mutilating a dead body on March 6th. And a year later, he was sentenced to a minimum of 50 years and up to 80 years in prison, which he did appeal multiple times, but it was never granted. Now, not only did Stephen destroy his own family uh, and murder the mother of his children, his father also committed suicide years later, and those close to him claimed that he just could never recover from what his son did to their family. Aww, Horrible. That is heartbreaking. So the Grant children were only four and six at the time, but they ended up, or and they ended up living with Tara's sister in Ohio. Though their father destroyed their family, Tara's sister gave them an incredible life. Oh, good. And today they are thriving, and they're working to bring awareness to domestic violence, which I thought that was kind of like the happy, as the happy as you could get ending. And they're all involved in an annual fundraising event called Tara's Walk, where they raise money for victims of domestic violence, which I just thought, oh, I watched an interview, like, where where they were talking, and it was just, oh, it gave me goosebumps, because the Mm -hmm. girl was crying. At the interview, she was only 16, (sighs) you know, and she was old enough to, like, remember her mom, you know? Um, But I did just want to end my story with saying, if you or someone you know needs help with domestic violence, please contact the National domestic abuse hotline um and i'm going to put the number in our show notes um they also have chat options available so if it's something where you can't you feel like you can't talk out loud about especially if you're in a house with someone who is abusing you um or you're concerned about a friend and just whatever they do have other options than talking on the phone so please Mm -hmm. reach out because help is available i just wanted to put that in there because it's so important and a lot of people don't know what to do in those especially younger people you know, yeah. it, it can happen to anybody. Well, I think it's hard to even like if you know someone, you don't know what to do and you yeah. don't know where is your place to step you don't in. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And and also it could be dangerous if you tell right. somebody and they find out. You know, yeah. And and also like these things start out small. You know, so just try to pay attention to those red flags. Don't mm-hmm. just push them off and ignore them. Because mm-hmm. I mean, this guy. You know? I'd be interested to see what mm-hmm. other people around them thought of their relationship mm-hmm. as well. Like after, yeah. I mean, it's always so sad because you always see it after it happened. Like, oh yeah, they did this and this and yeah. this. It's oh, kind of funny eye opening because I did. But... I was listening to another podcast who covered this case just to get some more ideas of what happened, and they were saying someone who knew Stephen when he was growing up. I mean, this isn't really like about their relationship, but they were so surprised that he landed somebody like her. The running theme where it's like Stephen was so not on her level at all. And a mm-hmm. lot of people thought he was just, I don't know, there was something where it was like he was going to rob, like if Stephen were to rob a bank, he'd probably leave his name there because he just, just to put it plain, is not a bright guy. Um, which like 
it isn't a red flag to not be intelligent. They just thought he was kind of a slimy guy. Well, yeah, they thought he was a slimy yes. guy, but also it sounds like they didn't think they would be a good match to begin oh, with. Yeah, like, it's no. just that shocking thing. No, and, and sure. a lot of why he did this to her was rooted in insecurity and mm-hmm. jealousy. He was insecure because he had a strong-ass, boss-ass wife who was making the money and getting shit done. She was super intelligent, and he was not on that level. Well, you also can tell just how much changed... Because you could tell he really thought highly of himself. He probably thought he was, like, the man of everyone's oh, dreams when sure. he went up to follow her for he's the like, funeral. Oh, this amazing... Yeah, and then yeah. switch oh, back. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like, he's going up there. That's a very oh, ballsy sure. move to follow someone. Mm-hmm. But then for those tables to turn, I'm sure that really yeah. took a toll on his manhood. It's funny. He was so jealous of her with another co-worker. Meanwhile, he's cheating. This one was, it's sad and it was really irritating for me to read because this guy mm. just makes me so angry. I love that you found the information about the kids though and what they did yeah, now. That's really inspiring. And never, you know, they don't really talk about that that no. often. And it's like, what did happen to those poor babies, you know? Right. And well, you're right. Good. They usually get just kind of brushed over. You think about the yeah. victim itself, which is so tragic alone, you know, yeah. but to say they're four and six was it yeah that's how their life had to change so much yeah and usually it's all you see is that's why i didn't i don't want to title this this episode like oh steven whatever the killer i want it to be like the murder of like because media and i'm not saying they glorify the killer no but that's usually what they talk about that's their main focus yeah just take it away from them for a second look at how amazing these kids are doing when i was looking at the article i couldn't find anything on them more recently but like the the boy was a freshman he was the younger one he was the four-year-old freshman in high school down in ohio um they took on the aunt's last name and he was into sports and like doing all these great things and so was the sister and it's just nice to see that they're okay i mean obviously i'm sure they have a lot of things going on that that are hard to deal with but trying to be a bright light with domestic violence. well to know that their their dad is just going to be in prison. Yeah. That's hard too. Oh, just knowing sure. that he's still there mm-hmm. and what he did. I think that's always hard because it's yeah. not this, I, and I can't speak for because none of my parents are in prison, but right. let's just say if I was putting yeah, myself, right. <laughs> but to put myself in that perspective, I can't even imagine. Yeah. Like you don't get that closure of, yes, I murdered your mom mm-hmm. and this happened, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You have, he's, they're literally getting ripped from their home and put in yeah. prison, go through court and everything is just full on media. Yeah. I can't imagine how... God you even cope knows, with that. How much they have seen on the internet about their mom. Right. You know, and I'm, I, I... Or even crime photos. Yeah. yeah. And that, there's episodes on TV, like TV's, uh, TV shows have covered this case, and it's like, mm-hmm. they've called him like the, I don't know, the au pair cheater killer, like all these different things. It's like, you know your dad did all these horrible things. Right. And then you hear about what happened to your mom you want to or not well even at like four and six how much would you remember or really understand i mean you just think of i'm sure they i mean i can't speak for them but you know i don't know if everyone always thinks of their dad as you know even someone having an affair with a a 19 year old you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. like they probably do they see that but like did they see that ever in the home you know after the fact of saying they did "Hmm." That was a good case, though. Thank you. For, for your little trend you have of who you like to pick for mm-hmm. your true crime, I actually really did like that one. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it was tragic, but Bad. it had a nice end to it, like you yes. said. I, yeah. I'm glad I added that in there. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that that's all I got for today. It's just hopefully that wasn't too depressing for your Tuesday. We have a lot coming up next Friday. Yes. Or this Friday. This, this Friday. <laughs> and it's going to be um, on a much lighter note. So Maybe. <laughs> you can join us on Friday. Yeah. Um, do not forget, please, rate and subscribe if you like it. Mm-hmm. You can rate it if you don't like it. Yeah. But at least subscribe if Helps you Helps us anyway. <laughs> so you can tell me that you hate my voice and hate my laugh and it's really gross. And I would be like, yes, we got a review. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting really mm. tired. So I'm gonna... I know. Me too. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> I know. You were yawning. You got another. Yawn. Don't yawn. Oh, I'm going to yawn would... again. Oh. <laughs> you can't say the word yawn. It makes me yawn. Okay. We, 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 <laughs> we are not a podcast at night. Hang it up. Hang it up. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.